This is the Guyana rainforest on South America's northeast shoulder, one of the world's last unexplored areas. Far in the remote interior of this wild land stretches a vast opening in the covering jungle. On these isolated savannas, reached only by air, lies the Dadanawa, one of the largest cattle ranches in the world. Here in the surrounding jungle is found one of South America's rarest and most unusual wild animals. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Hi, W.K. Stan Brock has spent many years managing the huge Dadanawa Ranch and studying its wildlife. But one animal he has never seen is the giant armadillo, a rare mammal unchanged since prehistoric times. I joined Stan as he returned to Guyana, and together we flew to the ranch in search of this elusive animal found only in the tropical rainforests of South America. It was part of a project Stan was undertaking as research associate of the Royal Ontario Museum. We tend to think of museums as dark, quiet places to visit on summer weekends, but they are really active centers of scientific inquiry, with some of the great discoveries of our time being made by museum field research teams. The Royal Ontario Museum was making a survey of South America's mammals, and it was our goal to capture the rare giant armadillo. Our plan was to study its behavior in captivity and then release it back to the rainforest. We flew over 400 miles of dense jungle and camped near the spot where a giant armadillo had recently been sighted by local Indians. We've searched for days with no luck, but Stan's eager to check on some new reports of the giant armadillo at a nearby water hole. We'll scout the pond and the area around it. We may be able to pick up a fresh trail. This big country looks empty, but there's plenty of wildlife here. In the grass ahead, a tamandua, a powerful little anteater. There's an unusual sight, bush dogs, rarely seen in open country. They've spotted the tamandua searching for a termite nest. Tamanduas aren't their normal prey, and they seem only curious. But the tamandua doesn't share their curiosity. Bush dogs can be fierce beyond all proportion to their slight stature. The Tamandua too is a deadly infighter. Its dagger-like claws are powerful enough to tear open rock-hard termite nests, and they can slash open a charging enemy. It doesn't look like the bush dogs are willing to test that defense. No sign of our quarry, but there's a smaller relative, the naked-tailed armadillo. They've seen the armadillo too. The giant we're after is many times this size. Again, this is not usual prey for the bush dogs, and they approach cautiously. Apart from the naked tail that gives it its name, the armadillo has one vulnerable spot, its soft underbelly. If the bush dog should turn it over, the hard shell will no longer protect it. But now their sharp teeth are useless against the armor plate. The dogs are too many and too strong, and the armadillo has only one defense now, to dig out of reach but it can't make much headway in this hard sun-baked soil. Now it's safe in its burrow with only the hard shell exposed. There's a familiar sight moving towards us. A dad and our cattle drive. 
During the years I managed the Dadanaur, I led many of these drives, and they're unlike roundups anywhere else. These cattle are wild, unpredictable, and driving them is demanding work. I've always found this an extremely risky operation, crossing the Rupununi River. If they panic, many could drown. Marlin spotted a movement on an upstream bank, a crocodile entering the water. This could be trouble. If the leaders bolt, the herd will follow. He's coming this way. I've got to keep the leaders from being spooked. This shallow bank is the herd's only exit. If they head downstream, they'll be trapped in deep water by the high, steep shore. They're turning away from the crop and heading for trouble. I've got to turn them back. The Indian vaqueros are at the rear of the herd. They're no help now. It's no use. They're coming ashore too far downstream. That bank is too high and they're piling up. I've got to get them out of there or a lot of cattle are going to drown in that crush. They're crowding against the bank and they can't climb out fast enough. The only hope is to try to head them upstream where the shore isn't so steep. More are pushing in all the time. It's becoming a stampede in water. Good. Some are starting upstream. The Indians are too far back to pick up this straggler. She's exhausted and swimming the wrong way. way. If I can just keep them from turning back downstream, they can climb the shallow bank without a traffic jam in deep water. The last few are starting out, and the Indians will soon have the herd under control. Here's an exhausted calf that needs some help. for dry land. We didn't lose a single steer and we might easily have lost 50 or 60 head. The Indian vaqueros rescued my horse from the panicked herd. It's probably as exhausted as I am, but we haven't much farther to ride till we reach the water hole where we'll continue our search for the armor-plated giant. The herd's moving well now. We're no longer needed here, and it's time we looked for the giant armadillo. The giant armadillo had been seen several times at a nearby water hole, and our plan was to wait there and see if he would come to us. The dry season's beginning now, and there should be many animals near the water ahead. We don't want to spook them and alarm the giant armadillo if he's still there. The bush dogs are searching for game trails along the bank. They've got company, a giant anteater. They'd better avoid this fellow. He's big and dangerous. 
They're going after him. Luckily for the dog, the anteater doesn't choose to turn and fight with escape so close at hand. The dogs learn one thing about giant anteaters today. They're superb swimmers. More animals are moving down to the water hole. Coati mundis. Coatis hunt equally well in trees or on the ground, moving along with their tails high in the air and their long, sensitive noses busily at work. Now the dogs have seen the coatis, but these are animals they'd better treat with respect. Coatis are tough and aggressive fighters. This whole area seems full of wildlife. Some predators, some prey. The coati's sniffing his way to an iguana. He's too busy catching insects to notice. <laughs> These big lizards are sometimes hunted by coatis, but this coati doesn't act like he's ever seen an iguana before. Maybe it's the wrinkled skin or bright green color that seems so strange. Now the iguana realizes it must fight for its life. Snapping and lashing its tail is its only defense. The iguana is lucky. Today, the coatis are interested in easier prey. Still no sign of the giant armadillo, but the water hole's drawing many other animals. In a tree just ahead, another iguana suns itself. Someone else has spotted it too, a tyra. It's unhurt. Often iguanas will leap from trees to escape a predator. The tyras take the long way down as the iguana makes good use of its head start. Light buff colored tyras like this one are rare. I've only seen a few. Normally the fur is dark colored. He's stalking something, a boa constrictor. Tyras are fearless predators, but this is dangerous prey. The boa's been waiting in ambush for animals coming in to drink. Now it's being challenged. The tire is quick. It stays just beyond reach of those jaws. Close, but only a mouthful of fur. If the snake connects, it will quickly surround the tire with its suffocating coils, squeezing its life out. The tires are fast, but so is the boa, and they've had enough. The dark one has spotted an armadillo, but not our giant. It doesn't seem disturbed by the tyra's approach. This is the nine-banded armadillo, an excellent digger. It would quickly burrow out of sight if it really felt threatened. Bigger than the naked-tailed armadillo, it's still less than one-fifteenth the size of the giant armadillo that we are after. Now he's getting annoyed. Those convulsive leaps are a characteristic defense. If you catch one of these armadillos, it may literally leap out of your hands.
He's heading for the forest, probably where his burrow is dug. That's also where his giant relative lives. We've had no luck here, so we'll ride along the forest's edge and continue our search for signs of the giant armadillo. As Stan and I rode near the forest, we searched for any sign that the giant armadillo had come this way. In the trees ahead, a sudden blaze of orange, a jaguar. There's its mate, moving out from the forest's edge. The jaguar is king of the South American jungle, and while these two seem peaceful now, few animals are safe when they're on the hunt. They're immensely powerful, and often take prey many times their size. It's an impressive sight. They're truly magnificent animals. They seem almost harmless in this kittenish mood. But Stan wants us to give them plenty of room. It isn't likely that they would attack without provocation, but there have been cases of these cats killing men. We've seen fresh armadillo tracks, and they lead to some thick brush ahead. Here is where our search ends. The giant armadillo, weighing up to 150 pounds. A living echo of our prehistoric past. We haven't been seen. It's too interested in searching for insects and grubs. Look at the size of those front claws. They're fantastic diggers, and they can burrow underground quickly when threatened, anchoring themselves tightly in their hole with only the hard shell exposed. He doesn't seem to be having much success hunting for a meal here. Looks like he's going to try his luck elsewhere. These animals only leave the dense forest infrequently. If he heads back into the jungle, we may lose him. This is a break. He's moving into the open, away from the forest. There's not much cover here, and we should be able to stay with him. His eyesight is poor, and I don't think he's seen us yet. Now we've got our chance. He's entering a wide open marsh. If I can just chase him down. He's tremendously strong, and he gets great traction with those immense front claws. It's almost impossible to hang on, and this mud isn't helping matters. He's trying to dig in. If he gets underground, we'll never pull him out. Nothing to do but hang on. It's like trying to catch a greased pig. There. Now he's not going anywhere. But those claws are a danger. Marlin's got the capture sack. But this fellow isn't ready to be captured yet. Careful. No use. We can't work it past those claws. We'll have to lift him into it. That weight is tremendous. He must weigh well over 100 pounds.
We've got our giant armadillo, and he's a big one. The problem now is to get on my horse. It would help if he'd stand still. There we are. I feel like a jungle Santa Claus. It's been an unforgettable adventure in search of the giant armadillo. After we had studied the giant armadillo in our ranch compound for several weeks, Stan and I released the animal with great appreciation for the efforts of those who roam the wild places of the world, attempting to solve the many mysteries of the wild kingdom. Thank you.